Sometimes when you work with really large format images, you want to zoom in on those images and then pan around to highlight certain areas of those images. And you'd think that you'd just use the scale and the position properties to do that, but I'm here to tell you that gets really messy. The way you want to pan around an image like that is to use the scale and the anchor point. So I'm going to show you that method in this lesson. I'm also going to show you a sort of a subset of that called the whip pan. So to follow along, go to Working Files, After Effects Projects, and open up 0505 whip pan. So here we have a composition with one large graphic file in it. The graphic file is this landscape JPEG, and if you look at it, it's almost 7,000 by 2,500. Now high definition is 1920 by 1080, and so this thing's basically more than three times as wide as a high definition frame. And I've placed this image inside a high definition frame, so what you're seeing is the center 1920 by 1080 of this larger thing. If you want to see the larger thing, just double click on it and look at it in the footage panel. There you are, there's the whole width of it. What I want to do is I want to highlight certain areas of this thing inside the composition panel and sort of zoom around, pan around, and show certain areas as if we're sort of taking a trip across this landscape. So to do that, I go back to composition here, and let me show you the wrong way to do that. You would think you'd open up position here by pressing the P key, and then you'd want to, let's say, grab this thing and move it over like that, let's say and put a keyframe there, for example. And then you want to probably have scale too, so I go Shift S for scale, and put a keyframe for scale, let's say. And I go in a little bit over here. Let's say I want to go down to this stream here, and I do want to, let's say, zoom in on the stream a bit here. So I'm going to scale in, and then suddenly it's like, wait a minute, I want to zoom in on the stream, but I'm not zooming in on the stream, I'm zooming sort of away from it, and why is that happening? Well, what's happening is that you're zooming in on the anchor point. The anchor point is going to be the center of this image. So as you zoom in or out, it's going to zoom in or out on that anchor point. Not a good thing, especially after you've repositioned it. So it gets really messy when you try to use zoom and position at the same time on a still image like this. So I'm going to undo that by turning off the keyframes, closing and opening this, and clicking Reset, and starting all over again. What we're going to use instead is the anchor point. Now it's kind of counterintuitive, to use the anchor point from this particular location from inside the composition panel. I'll show you why. I'll close this down so we don't have everything showing here and open up A for anchor point. Hold up Shift S for scale. I'm going to grab the anchor point and move it. Now I'm going to use the pan behind tool because that's the logical way to use things. So here's the pan behind tool. Why wow, was a shortcut? Grab it and move it around and well, nothing's happening. I'm just moving the anchor point around. There's no change to the way this thing looks here inside the composition panel. So what you need to do is make your changes inside the layer panel. This is really counterintuitive for folks who have never sort of encountered this process before. So I'm gonna get things back to the beginning here by pressing Command or Control Z. And now I need to open up the layer panel. Now moments ago we opened up the footage panel and saw things like that. But now we're gonna open up the layer panel. You open up the layer panel from within a layer. Double click on this layer, and now we're inside what's called the layer panel. The layer panel looks for all the world like the footage panel, except here we have a timeline that matches the timeline down here and the footage panel just as a still image, okay? So we're inside the layer panel, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this anchor point around here, and that's gonna make a difference in terms of how our composition looks. And we can look at the anchor point path here inside the layer panel. It's a great feature of the layer panel. It's this option to view the anchor point path. It's not the position path, it's the anchor point path. You have a choice between masks and anchor point at this point. So anchor point is what we wanna choose there in case you see masks instead. Right now we're all set up and ready to go with one little exception. I'm going to grab the anchor point here. I don't need to use the pan behind tool anymore, just the selection tool and I can move it around. Really great, but what kind of effect is this happening back in the composition? Well, you need to be able to view the composition at the same time you're working here inside the layer panel. Let me do Control or Command Z to undo that little thing I just did. I'm going to open up the composition panel. There it is. And to see this while I work over here in the layer panel seems like impossible, right? What you need to do is just take this composition panel and move it to another frame, from this frame to, let's say, this frame over here to the left. Notice the purple rectangle there, just drop it there, and now it's going to be over here to the left. I can kind of expand a little bit, but I really do most of my work here, so I don't want to expand it too much. But now watch what happens. This is so cool. I'm going to grab the anchor point here, and I'm going to see the results over here. It's very tempting to click over here and move that around, but don't do that. Work only here in the layer panel. Notice it says layer. Now, as I move the anchor point, watch to the left there. Look at that. Is that great? Now you can see how things work when you move around here. So you use the anchor point as your way to change the position, the location, the panning of the still image. 
Okay, I want to start on that distant building there. I'm going to zoom in on it like that. Here we go. Notice how we're zooming in and we're seeing the results inside the composition panel. Nothing's changing in the layer panel because we see the entire layer when we work in the layer panel. Here we see the results over the composition panel. Really cool feature. Let's take the current time indicator back to the beginning of the comp by pressing the home key. There we go. Turning on keyframes for anchor and scale. Boom, boom, like that. And now let's just take a little tour of this place. We've got started right there. Let's move someplace else. Let's say a oh, second and a half in here. Let's move on over to this little village here. See how that works? Let me need to maybe zoom out a little bit over there. So we'll zoom out as we make that transit. There we go. Now we're getting the edge showing up here. So we need to make sure we don't show the edge. There you go. And I want to just kind of hover there for a second. So I'm going to go forward a bit. I'm going to copy those two keyframes by marquee selecting them. Going controller command C, and I'll do controller command V, and it'll place those keyframes where the current time indicator is. So that's good. So now it'll hold for a while. I'm going to put a hold keyframe there as well. So I'm going to click on those guys, right click, and go toggle hold. There we go. And let's move on to the next location. We'll move a couple more seconds in here and take our anchor point. Let's move over to this stream. Now notice what happens. I grabbed the hold keyframe, not the next one, not this linear keyframe. It happens a lot when you work with keyframes that are on top of each other. So I'm going to do Command or Control Z to undo that. I'm going to click on this keyframe and click on this one down here by shift clicking on it, not control clicking, and see if that works this time. There we go. Now we got it. And notice that we didn't change the scale here. That didn't change, but the position did. So it's the only thing that's different now. We're actually the anchor point. Now you can see we kind of are showing the bottom here, so I can maybe pull it up just a little bit. There we go. Maybe pull out a little bit, or just ah, stay focused right there. That's our next spot. And we can copy and paste that keyframe too. So I'll just go Control C, go over here and paste that Control V, turn this first one here into a hold. There we go. Let's move on down the line here a little farther. Let's say we want to go over to this building now. So we go over to the building. And again, I grabbed the hold keyframe, so we got to go back and click on the correct keyframe and move it instead. There we go. Now we're over to the building. Probably want to zoom out a bit here. The thing is, I want to zoom out starting here, not starting over here. So I need to take this keyframe there, the scale keyframe, copy that one, Control C, paste it here, Control V. That's Controller Command C, Controller Command V. And now we're going to, let's say, go to this house and we'll. Maybe zoom out a little bit just to kind of give a little bit of space and show folks the neighborhood. And now we need to adjust the location just a little bit more so you don't show the bottom there. How about there? Nice little bucolic setting. And now let's move on over to the wood. So before we do that, I'm going to hold there for just a little while. So I'll copy these guys by marquee selecting them. Controller Command C, Controller Command V. And we've copied them. And we'll turn this guy on top there into a hold keyframe. Right click, hold. There we go. And then we'll move on down the line a little farther to the woods, let's say. So again, I need to grab the right keyframe by clicking this guy this time. Pull him over there. There we go. Now we got the woods. Zoom in a little bit at this point. There we go. And maybe adjust the location a little bit. There we are. That's nice. Show the clouds. There we go. And then maybe for our last thing, I'll copy that one first. Let's do guys. Control C, Control or Command D. There we go. Now maybe for our last move, we'll take people back to the beginning. So I select this keyframe there. We're going to go, let's say, back over to here and maybe pull out a little bit just to show folks a little bit wider shot of the landscape. So let's see what that looks like there. We'll pull back a little bit. Maybe we need to adjust the anchor point so we don't show the bottom of the screen there. Lovely. And maybe pull it just a little bit to the right. There we go. There you have it. Now let's just see how this works. We'll go to the beginning. Press the home key. And now we're going to watch it here in the comp panel. And you know, you can watch full screen if you want instead of this little bitty screen here by pressing the tilde key. You hover your cursor over any particular panel and wherever it's hovering, you don't need to click, just have it sitting there. And press the tilde key, which is also called the accent key. In the upper left hand corner of your keyboard, press that. Now we're at full screen. We can watch this thing in action, see how it looks. Put that to the left, hold for a while. Down to the stream, hold. Pull back a little bit. Over to the woods and back out to the wide shot. And then it loops again like that. Okay, let's go back by just hovering here and pressing the tilde key again. That worked out really well. 
And what we could do for all these guys, we could easy ease out, easy ease in those things to make it go more smoothly. And we can control these guys by controlling the handles just the same way we move things around in the screen with the position property. So these handles work for the anchor point as well. Really nice to make it smoother looking and also having easy ease in and easy ease out to make things go more smoothly. So we know we can do that. But what I want to show you now is something called the whip pan, where you go from one place to the next and have it go really quickly. And when it goes quickly, it kind of blurs along the way. So let's say we're going from this spot here to that spot there. I want it to happen quickly. So I'm going to bring these keyframes over here much closer to it, like that. So it's going to go fast, like that. And when it goes fast like that, it'll be more realistic if it blurs a little bit. So to do a whip pan, you put two keyframes like that close together where it's moving from one place to the next. That would be the beginning of a whip pan, like that. And then you allow it to blur. And the way to make things blur is you turn on motion blur for your layer. This is the motion blur icon there, indicating this is the column and that's the switch. Switch on motion blur for the layer. And now watch what happens. Nothing, right? Nothing happens. You've turned it on. You've told After Effects that when you render this, when you turn it into a movie, make sure you use motion blur. But if you want to preview motion blur, if you want to see what it's going to look like, because it is kind of processor intensive and you don't want it on all the time, you switch it on up here. So you tell the layer that you should be blurred, but you turn it on so you can see it there. Now you can see the motion blur. So let's see that little whip pan at work here. See how blur is there? I'll do it again. Boom, like that. Very cool. So I'm going to bring these two guys closer together, too. I'm going to spread out these keyframes here and hold it longer, basically, so it sits there for a while. Then I'm going to bring this next set over like that, these two guys that go to the next shot. So here it goes. Watch this one on the left now. Has that quick zoom and blurs things out. And it holds for a while there. These two guys are going to go from one to the next, like that. So I need to bring these two guys over like so, right next to each other. I want to turn this one into a hold as well, because we later would use easy ease in and easy ease out, so it's better to put a hold here. Right click on that and say hold, there we go. And now it's going to be a whip pan there as well. Let's watch over here. That'll blur again. So that's how you can pan around a large image using the anchor point and scale, and also how you can have that whip pan effect if you really want to just move quickly from one place to the next and make it look more realistic with a little bit of a blur in between.